This litigation is a shameless attempt by the PUBG plaintiffs to monopolize the battle royale genre of video games and inhibit legitimate competition. And we are rightfully outraged. I'll, I'll, I'll tone it down, sorry. This is a familiar lawsuit, sort of. Uh, we talked about the rules of survival. I think it was a, was it an Android game or a PC, a PC game? Anybody remember, Brandon? Uh, that is a mobile game. It was a mobile game. Okay, the rules of survival mobile game, which got sued by PUBG pretty much right after PUBG Mobile came out, I think. And so NetEase has now responded with a motion to dismiss, saying that the PUBG clone, not clone, is not a clone. PUBG's attempt to monopolize the popular battle royale genre of video games, or videos games, nothing like <laughs> making a typo on line two of your complaint, or your, your motion, fails under the Copyright Act, the Lanham Act, and California's unfair competition law. PUBG's copyright claim must be dismissed. Copyright only protects against the copying of original expression, not ideas, not expression so inherent to an idea that it merges with the idea, not elements borrowed from another creator or the public domain, and not sena faire that flow from any ideas, merged expression, or stock treatments of a given genre. I'm assuming they're going to go into it, but just in case you're not familiar with that weird phrase, Senna Fair, scenes a uh, fairy, it almost looks like in, um, in, in English. Um, it's actually French, and fair is the French word that means to do. Senna Fair are sort of like scenes of the doing or common scenes, scenes that are just used in making films, making stories. These are just scenes that have been used from the dawn of time. I mean, even Adam and Eve's scene of two people in the woods is a sin affair. You can't copyright two people talking in the woods. You can copyright what they say. So the story of Adam and Eve, if told in a copyrightable time, if told in you know in a contempt you know if, if it was originally told right now, it would be copyrightable. But the idea of having people in the woods and, and talking about a story of why they're in the woods and what it means, that's not copyrightable. We're not talking about copywriting the the scenes. We're talking about copywriting the actual expression of the whole idea. Accordingly. PUBG's copyright in Battlegrounds does not preclude other game developers from creating competing games based on the same underlying ideas, rules, or expression that flows from the game idea itself. When comparing the games for a non-infringement determination, the court must filter out unprotectable expression. Once these elements are removed, the court should compare the two works using the virtual identity standard applied to both games in the same genre and to works that express real-world objects. PUBG cannot show substantial similarity, much less the required virtual identity. Accordingly, its claim fails. PUBG's Lanham Act claim identifies no trade dress distinct from its copyright claim and alleges functionality of claimed elements. It must be dismissed because it improperly conflicts with copyright and patent law. In general, they're, they're correct there. When trademarks are on functional items, no, you're actually not allowed to do that. <clears throat> the case that I studied in law school was those... Um, construction, those diamond construction signs, you know, they're in like a, a square but rotated diamond pattern, and they're orange, and they say road construction ahead. Well, at the bottom of many of those signs, you, you, you'll, you can tell the difference. You can tell the difference between like the good ones that the, the, the road crews have to use all the time on the highway and the, the cheapo ones that like the local crews use because the local crews have like the regular old stand-up ones. The ones that uh, the, the big road crews usually use have these springs on the bottom so that like as the truck passes or whatever and the wind blows the thing over, it actually flexes instead of gets blown down the road. Well, there was a company that tried to say that they had a trademark on those springs. Okay, yeah, it's a distinct design, right? You've got a stand that's holding up a, a, a sign, and instead of the stand being made of a pole, the stand is made of springs. That does look different. You've got a spring on the left side and a spring on the right side, and it looks different. So you can tell that company's signs look different from other companies' signs. Except it's functional. They didn't need to have a spring there uh, for, for, for branding. 
they needed to have a spring for the functionality of of the wind passing or whatever and, and not wanting the thing to move and wanting it to be able to resist the wind. It was a functional thing, therefore it should have been patentable, not trademarkable. This litigation is a shameless attempt by the PUBG plaintiffs to monopolize the battle royale genre of video games that inhibit legitimate competition. And we are rightfully outraged. I'll, I'll, I'll tone it down, sorry. Plaintiff's copyright claim is premised on the alleged similarities in ideas, merger of ideas and expressions, sun affair, game rules, and mechanics. Copyright does not protect any of these aspects of PUBG's games. In those few instances where PUBG identifies protectable expression, differences abound, as reflected in the complaint as well as the works at issue. This is particularly the case for real-world products such as weapons and vehicles, which PUBG did not create in the first instance and which are entitled to thin protection at most. PUBG's Lanham Act claim, which is based on an ill-defined trade dress consisting of the entirety of its copyrighted game, is likewise doomed. I, I happen to agree there. Defendants NetEase, etc., specialize in the development of video games, been doing so for 15 years. They distributed over 100 mobile games, various genres. It primarily derives revenue from the sale of in-game virtual items. They released Rules of Survival and Knives Out in 2017, two online games in the battle royale genre. The genre, rooted in a novel first published in 1999, has since increased in popularity and spawned movies and video games. Among the myriad Battle Royale games is Battlegrounds, developed by PUBG Corporation. To survive a motion to dismiss, a complaint must contain sufficient factual matter accepted as true to state a claim to relief that is plausible on its face. This is known as the pleading standard, and it, uh, it is you absolutely very easy to meet the pleading standard. Just state your claim for relief from beginning to end, doesn't even need to include all the facts as long as it puts your opposing party on notice of your claim. Like, you know, you hit, uh, you hit my car, I got injured, I need, I need, I'm suing you for damages. Is more than enough for a, an injury claim under a federal law if there was such a thing. Um, unfortunately, personal injury is state law, so the federal pleading standard doesn't apply. To survive the pleading stage, a plaintiff must show that defendant's work is substantially similar or as to works based on real-world characteristics of the same genre or the same genre of video games, they have to show that they are virtually identical, according to NetEase. When ruling on a motion to dismiss, courts must apply the Ninth Circuit's extrinsic test for assessing similarity. The extrinsic test is objective in nature. It depends not on the responses of the trier of fact, like the jury or or the judge who's determining the facts, but on comparing the specific criteria which can be listed and analyzed. When applying the extrinsic test, a court must filter out and disregard the non-protectable elements in making its substantial similarity determination. And so they're probably going to go on and argue that because plaintiffs may not rely on unprotectable elements, dismissal at the pleading stage is appropriate, even if there is substantial overlap between the works. For example, this district dismissed a copyright claim accusing the video game Dead Rising of copying George Romero's Dawn of the Dead even though both works take place in a rural two-story mall with helipads on top and a gun shop. Depict the plight of survivors during the zombie outbreak, star men with short brown hair who wear leather jackets and undertake activities connected to journalism, and tall athletic African Americans who know how to handle weapons. And the main character makes use of comedic weapons such as pies to fight the zombies. These multiple extensive similarities were filtered out because they flow from the wholly unprotectable idea of humans battling zombies in a mall during a zombie outbreak, or consist of stock features of everyday life, such as undeveloped characters wearing average clothing or a shopping mall. After filtering these elements out, no remaining actionable similarities were left, and dismissal was appropriate. Similarly, in Zella v. E.W. Scripps Co., the court dismissed a copyright claim accusing the celebrity cooking television show of Rachel Ray of infringing the 
the treatment of an earlier celebrity cooking show entitled Showbiz Chefs, even though both had similar formats, including a host, guest celebrities, an interview, and a cooking segment, discussion of the celebrity's current projects, and a tour of the celebrity's home. These elements are common to every talk show to some extent, and the plaintiff could not monopolize the talk show genre. Plaintiff's complaint alleges that the rules of battlegrounds, as well as gameplay mechanics and procedures implementing those rules are copyrightable audio audiovisual aspects. This is wrong as a matter of law. Game mechanics and rules are not entitled to protection, nor are procedures including winning conditions that make up a game. Moreover, pursuant to the doctrine of sin affair, any expression that necessarily flows from an idea, like the rules defining a game, is also unprotectable. To differentiate between unprotectable ide ideas embodied in rules of a game and protectable expression, courts begin by describing the games in appropriately simple terms. In simple terms, Battlegrounds is a battle royale game wherein a large group of players are dropped together onto an island, forced to scrounge for equipment scattered on the island, and encouraged by external forces to kill each other until only one survives. Based on this simple description, at least one of the following features are unprotectable game rules, or sin affair, flowing from the underlying game idea. The idea of a health status bar, as well as energy boosts, the ability of characters to stand, walk, run, take a prone position, Position, crawl in a prone position, take a kneeling position in combat, are simply mechanics that flow from the idea of forcing players to kill each other. Similarly, down but not out is just an implementation of the unprotectable health bar mechanic, and thus is also not protectable. Pre-game lobby and waiting areas, nothing more than an in-game tutorial that allows players to learn the rules of the game before gameplay begins. Features that exist to teach players the rules of the game are not protectable. Inherent in the idea of dropping players on the island together for the purpose of killing each other is the means of accomplishing the drop. Parachuting onto the island directly flows from that idea. Equipment acquisition, similarly. Airdrops, bombardment, shrinking gameplay, the idea of last one standing wins games in which players are forced to kill each other requires game mechanics to drive players together. This is the purpose of airdrops, bombardment, shrinking gameplay. Game mechanics are not protectable. Players using real world weapons, wearing everyday clothing, and having limited choices of weapons clothing and related equipment are not protectable. Such sin affair elements stem from the use of stock characters, humans with no backstory wearing plain clothing, and real-world weapons. PUBG could have chosen to express the ideas and rules discussed above in original and creative ways, such as through fanciful creatures, weapons, vehicles, or settings. Remind anybody of Fortnite? And we started to think of like Fortnite and all of its unique ways of, of expressing itself, but its complaint identifies no such elements. Similarly, while PUBG makes repeated references to the overall look and feel of its game, the only aspects it identifies are real-world based unprotectable elements. Indeed, the actual look and feel of the party's games is quite different, with Battlegrounds having dark and muted tones, and NetEase's games being notably brighter and lighter. Winner winner chicken dinner is not protectable. Short phrases, no matter how distinctively arranged, are not protectable elements in copyright. No protection for the phrase, let us turn up the beat in that, uh, in, in one case. No protection for the phrase, players they gonna play and haters they gonna hate. And no uh, protection for the short phrase, winner, winner, chicken dinner, according to NetEase. Because the works at issue are all in the battle royale genre, under the Sen Affair doctrine, PUBG cannot claim protection over any elements found throughout that genre. The Sen Affair doctrine excludes from copyright protection expressions that are standard in the treatment of a given genre. For instance, the mazes, tunnels, and scoring tables in Atari's Pac-Man were Sen Affair. The battle royale genre is well recognized. Its elements include a large group of people dropping onto an island empty-handed where they they must search for armor, gear, and weapons, which are randomizers scattered over the map, including in chests or caches. The island is defined by a massive map that features abandoned towns, lush environments, and numerous explorable buildings, but the actual area of gameplay shrinks over time, and players are driven together by an external threat. Battlegrounds does not receive copyright protection for expression of these elements found throughout the game. When comparing two works in the same genre, or two works that depict real-world objects, the plaintiff must show that parties' works are not just substantially similar, 
but have a higher standard of virtual identity. Under the virtual identity standard, even small differences such as colors, facial features, or clothing are sufficient to support a finding of non-infringement. That standard applies here, where Battlegrounds, Knives Out, and Rules of Survival are all within the Battle Royale video game genre and where PUBG has admitted that most of its game mimics real-world object sounds and movement. Accordingly, PUBG must show that NetEase's expression is virtually identical to that of Battlegrounds to establish infringement. But NetEase's expression is not virtually identical. For example, PUBG alleges NetEase copied its Thompson submachine gun, but real-world elements of the gun, such as those shown in the now-expired patent for that very gun, must be filtered out. As shown, PUBG's gun has appropriated the design and configuration of the sight, barrel, and grip. As shown, PUBG's gun has appropriated the design and configuration of the sight, barrel, grip, magazine, and numerous other features from a century-old gun design. Once those elements are removed, there is no virtual identity. Other patent drawings confirm that PUBG is asserting myriad unprotectable real-world guns, weapons, and equipment. After filtering out that which PUBG has taken from many other creators, so little expression is left that only wholesale identical replication of Battlegrounds could infringe on PUBG's copyright. But PUBG failed to allege any virtually identical expression. The complaints comparison images confirm the lack of substantial similarity, much less virtual identity, in the expression of land masses, rivers, roads, structures, and other features, aircraft from which players parachute, and the weapons and equipment. The artwork in Battlegrounds has a dark tone, with harsh contrasts against a barely tinted sky. The structures and environment look war-torn and long abandoned. Buildings are falling apart, peeling, pocked with bullet holes, etc. NetEase's games have a visual feel that is ironically at odds with a deadly objective. Knives Out uses a broader range of colors with ample use of purples and pinks. It has white snow in some areas and green grass in others. Its settings suggest recent human presence such as equipment on tables and books on shelves. The interiors of abandoned buildings and even ancient ruins do not contain the sort of rubbish seen in battlegrounds. Rules of Survival is different as well with meadows of flowers, use of bright turquoise and yellow, and futuristic elements not seen in other games. Glowing objects, plasma and beam effects, a giant robot, and a futuristic flying craft. The air jumps are different in art and interface. The air jump in Battlegrounds begins on a propeller plane. During the same sequence in Knives Out, the plane is either jet-driven or depicted as a group of helicopters. The parachute displays a Knives Out logo. There is no separate button to cut it away. In Rules of Survival, the aircraft is a VTOL design, etc. They go on to say that the trademark claims should be dismissed because copyright treatment of a game is not a trademark. PUBG cannot circumvent the limits of the Lanham Act through its allegation that NetEase plagiarized Battlegrounds and is confusing consumers about the origin of NetEase's games. This is because the Lanham Act's protection of consumers against confusion as to the origin of goods refers to the producer of the tangible goods that are offered for sale, not to the author of any idea, concept, or communication. In other words, PUBG might have an argument about the advertising that NetEase is using, maybe the icon and wording on the App Store or something like that, but they don't have a trademark claim by claiming that they copied parts of the game, you know, and, and that the game is, is copied. That's a copyright claim. That's not a trademark claim. They go on to make those same arguments and then conclude that the complaint should be dismissed entirely because there's nothing left after you remove those unprotectable elements. So that's interesting, and I'm looking forward to what happens next. We'll get to uh, see what the judge does with that motion to dismiss. We will hear from PUBG in response to the motion to dismiss. They have to file their own memorandum, usually in 14 days. And there will be a hearing. Let's see if I can get to the, the top of this here. There will be a hearing on August 31st, unless it's rescheduled. Could very easily be rescheduled. Don't anybody, you know, try to go to this, this, this hearing without verifying it like the night before. Um, August 31st, 2018, 9 a.m., courtroom 5 in Oakland, California, uh, before Honorable Jeffrey S. White is what, where somebody could go in and hear this argument if they actually hold the argument. So that's really interesting. We'll follow that case. Uh, I think we are. I think that's how we got notification of this one. We'll follow that case and, and, and give you updates along the way. I don't know if you guys have heard me talk about it before, but Ilsa has, um, has hurt her leg 
and she went to the vet this week. Again, it's the second time. We took Dilsa to the vet about five months ago, right after I thought that she hurt her leg, when she was having trouble walking on that leg. And then um, the vet said, you know, she probably just sprained it, and you probably just need, um, you know, to give her some steroids and, some, and, and, and give her some time. So, uh, unfortunately, that doesn't appear to be have been the case. Um, instead, it appears to be an ACL tear, and poor Ilsa needs to have her right knee operated on by a dog orthopedic surgeon. And I try my best to save money for these things, and unfortunately, I was not prepared for this level of an expense. I have secured a loan. My parents have loaned me the money for the dog, and uh, I just I will owe it back. And so I, I want everybody to know the dog will be taken care of. This is not a life or death situation. Nobody, I'm not asking anybody's support, money or whatever, or, or you know, if, if, if it's going to hurt, if it's going to be a burden. And I don't want anybody to feel bad. Anybody who wants to help, um, I, I'm asking for a little bit of help here on GoFundMe. I'll post the uh, the link here, and then I'll I'll leave it alone because I don't want to make this whole channel about about this. But she is she does make cameos on here. We do post her videos, um, and I love her very very much. She's my favorite girl. And there's a couple videos on that GoFundMe page too if you want to watch some dog videos. I like to make music videos of them. This, of course, is a community-supported channel. Thank you very much to our Patreon supporters for July. Kareem Harper has sponsored us for $500, uh, or at the $500 level. Uh, thank you very much, Kareem, for your sponsorship. Really appreciate that. We have several $50 plus supporters. Thank you to Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, John H. Anderson, Vera Mentain, Sean McNamara, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, and Grunkle Tia Marie. And thank you to all the $5 plus supporters who have been scrolling on the LED panel behind me. And I'll find room to put you all on the crawl at the end of this thing. We usually do like a musical outro or, or some announcements or something like that. So thank you very much. Love you all. I am. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Thank you for joining me for this epic three-hour live stream, and uh, see you next week. <laughs>